When you really start to get into the hobby of mechanical keyboards, there are studios and designers that are seemingly held in a higher esteem than the majority of the market. Names that are associated with the ever-elusive endgame or that get the nod of respect from other people deep in the community. Names like Key Colt, TGR, Smith & Rune, and for me, Matrix Lab. So I'll do my best to be objective today, but it is my absolute pleasure to have their latest board and house for audit. This is the Matrix Lab 6XV 3.0 Corsa. It's a 65% layout, it's got a unique mounting and opening method, an interesting weight configuration, and a 0.85 inch LCD screen. I have to start with the finish because, wow, this is the Meteorite Gray. It has colored glitter suspended in the finish. It looks like concrete, but it feels like powder coat. It's got a light texture to it and it's immaculate. It also doesn't fingerprint, like, at all. It's easily the most premium finish I've seen yet on a board. If gray doesn't do much for you, they have a bananas amount of colorways on this thing. This is a group I, it is open now, and it runs through November 15th with fulfillment in Q2 of 2023. North American proxy is novel keys. Pricing is 430 for the standard version or 500 for the PVD version, which I've got here. PVD is this mirror finish coating. They come in a few different colors. I think this is the gray. If you've ever seen a Matrix Lab board before, they generally have one place on the weight where you can store a little custom magnetic badge, which they release for their community from time to time. The Corsa section here is magnetic and it lifts out to reveal placement locations for three badges. Now, I didn't have any of these badges before, so now I do. These are absolutely insane to me. These are one-off customs, of course, and it is important to note that the Corsa doesn't include any of these badges. This design is more so like fan service for people that already have a few of these in their collection. It also has this accent piece that runs the length of the back of the board. This is very Matrix style right here, and the color of the bar and the accents change depending on which colorway you choose. The USB-C is right side mounted here, and there is a daughter board inside. And you absolutely can't ignore this LED screen that functions as the badge for the board. It's full color. It's 128 by 128 pixels. The resolution is solid. It's got a nice depth to it. It's also got this little aluminum frame with the course of lettering. There is just a little bit of play on the frame of this prototype, but it can be shimmed easy enough. The stock animation of that Porsche does go pretty hard, but you can, of course, upload whatever GIF you want to a site owned by Matrix Lab, and they will convert that into an animation file for that screen. There is a little catch, though. Everything you upload is public, so don't upload any weird stuff that you wouldn't want everybody seeing. Then you can download whatever you like, hit function and backspace to delete the existing file and just drop the new one in. Everything I touch on this board feels like quality. Fully built out, it weighs in at just under 4 pounds or 1.8 kilos. It is surprisingly heavy for its size. The outside is screwless, and it also appears to be seamless from most angles, and that's because this is a very interesting case design. The whole thing uses this catch ball latching system. It's very secure, but it's also very easy to open and work on. Inside, on the top case, we have these little pins that fit down into these ball latches on the lower, and we see some other interesting stuff in here. They've got these large rubber columns around the edge that prevent the case sections from making metal on metal contact, which prevents scratching, also makes for really good sound isolation. And we can see the unique mounting system here where we have these little leaf spring bridges made of FR4 that have another little rubber column in the middle, which I thought sounded a lot better than a rubber nipple in the middle. The plate and PCB assembly fits on these, and then we have little rubber caps here as well. The plate itself is aluminum. There's cutouts everywhere. It's basically skeletonized, so there's a fair amount of flex that you can demonstrate, but it's still fair to call this like a stiffer typing experience with a fairly soft bottom out. The PCB is hot swap by default and only supports a 6.25U space bar. You do have the option of stepped or regular caps, but aside from that, you're locked into the layout. They do have an additional solder kit if you want more options. Thankfully, the PCB doesn't have flex cuts. It makes for a fuller sound, but it is thin at 1.2 millimeters versus the standard 1.6. They don't include any shims, so I went with some TX 1.2 V3s. At this point, I've used pretty much every stabilizer out there, and TXs are always my go-to. They're snap-ins, they're easy to tune, they're really consistent. We do have some foam options here, a case foam, plate foam, and a PE sheet. We'll listen to no foams, case foam only, and all foams. And I feel like it would be borderline criminal behavior to put a PE sheet in a board of this caliber, so we're gonna be ignoring that. For switches, I went with the tungsten linears from Owl Labs. These were lubed and filmed by my friends over at Lube switches. There's a code in the description that gets me nothing but saves you 10% on your order. I'll also include the test of my recently released tactile switches that I did in partnership with Prevail. And I'm sorry, these sold out insanely fast, but I do want to put the tests here just for a reference for the board. For caps, we're using GMK Polybius, courtesy of my friends over at Space Cables. These are available in extras right now. They're kind of crazy. They're modeled after like 80s arcade scanning rink carpeting. I'm into it.
So for me, it's really close between no foams at all and just the case foam. If you put both foams in there, you start to get more of that woody, reflective sound that we usually hear in like top mount boards, so you can flavor to taste. But for me, I'm probably just gonna run the lower case foam. I would definitely classify this as a clackier board. The typing experience itself is very nice. Super comfortable, front height's 20 millimeters and a seven degree typing angle. I do prefer it with a rest as I do almost all my boards. I mean, what can I say, really? This is top tier in quality, execution, attention to detail, innovation. It's art. It's what I would expect at this price point. And being honest, the case system and particularly the finish exceeds my expectations at this price. The opening system makes it extremely easy to work on and that is very appreciated when I build a board three or four times to do a review. Like I said in the intro, Matrix Lab is one of those grail studios for me. I will have this board in my collection always. Huge thanks to Matrix for the opportunity. I will leave a link in the description for their big Notion document that has every piece of information you'd ever want to know, as well as a link to Novel Keys if you want to grab one of these for yourself. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.